Okay, so in this video, I'm going to go through a few Lewis diagram structures, and then I'm going to assign their shape and their hybridization and their polarity. So let's have a look at a very simple example of nitrogen bonded to another nitrogen. So N2. So with N2, first of all, we want to look at the total number of valence electrons. So how many valence electrons are there in each of the nitrogens? When you look up nitrogen on the periodic table, it has seven protons and seven electrons when it's neutral. So the valence shell would therefore have five valence electrons because two would be in the 1s, there'll be two in the 2s, and to get up to seven, we've still got, so that gives us up to four, we've got three that are left in that 2p. So we've got five valence electrons. So each nitrogen would bring along five electrons and we've got two nitrogens so it's 10 electrons in total that will be used to make this structure so starting off with the two nitrogens singly bonded to each other and work out how many electrons are in that single bond so remember a single bond has two electrons a double bond a double bond equals four electrons and a triple bond equals six electrons. So we've got a single bond here, so that's two electrons. So if I take that from my total, so 10 minus two would give me eight electrons left over. So the next way to do it would be, so firstly, you work out your total electrons, you write a single bond between the connecting atoms, and then you fill the outside atoms first, and then you work your way to the inside. So if I put my electrons, I'm going to do crosses so it's really clear for you. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So that's got two, four, six, eight. And then I'll put my last two up on top of that nitro there. So I've used up all eight of my electrons. I can't add any more to that structure. What I need to do now is rearrange those electrons so that it satisfies the octet for both of those nitrogens. Because nitrogen is one of those elements that needs to have eight. It can't have more, it can't have less, it needs to have those eight electrons. So we've got two that are on this nitrogen, we've got two that are shared. So it's got two, four for this nitrogen here. The other nitrogen has two, four, six, eight electrons. So that's happy, but this one's only got four, so it needs four more. Now I can't add any more electrons, but what I can do is I can move the electrons that are owned or just sitting purely on this nitrogen from the ownership domain, if you want to think of it like that, into the sharing domain. So instead of taking it for itself, nitrogen's going to now share those electrons. So if I move these two, and let's just do these two into there. So I'm just gonna wipe these out now. So now I've got two, four, six, eight, ten electrons. So I haven't added any. I've just rearranged them. So let's check each nitrogen. This one has two, four, six, eight. It's good. This one's got two, four, six, eight. So now they've both got eight. So they've got their valency of eight, which is what they need. So that is how we draw the Lewis diagram. Now, if you want to think about the shape of this one, so we've got two single atoms that are connected. So this is going to be a linear shape. So whenever you've got two atoms, they're going to be in that linear shape. So this is linear. Now, in terms of the polarity of this one, so this would be a non-polar compound purely because the electronegativity on each of the nitrogens would be the same. So they would have an equal pull on those shared electrons. So there would be no resulting region of the molecule that would have more electrons uh, than the other part of the molecule. So it's like a tug of war and they're both pulling equally on that, those central electrons. So remember electronegativity is when you're looking at the electrons that are shared between two atoms and which of those atoms will have those electrons sitting on it more of the time. It will be the one that's more electronegative. So this one would be non-polar. And the hybridization now. So we've got a orbital that's holding the two lone pairs, and we've got one orbital that's making a sigma bond. So it would be needing two orbitals, so it's an SP hybridization.
okay? And then it's got two Ps to have the double and triple bond sitting in. So that's our shape, our polarity, and our hybridization of N2. Let's have a look at BCl2.